Hello aviators, and welcome back to Skyships. In the comments, some of you are asking me to make videos about Boeing airplanes. Well, the wait is over. Commencing Boeing Marathon. And we'll start with the biggest, most complex and expensive child of the guys from Boeing, with the company itself. The Boeing company is an American airspace corporation that delivers, manufactures and supplies a wide scale of products. Airplanes, helicopters, launch vehicles and space complexes. Boeing is one of the largest airspace entities in the world and the second largest military supplier in the United States. The history of Boeing company goes far into the past. No kidding, it's over a hundred years old. And so, the year is 1910. Vladimir Lenin lives in Paris, March 8th is declared the International Women's Day, Titanic is being built at the shipyards of Belfast, and in Far Asia, Japan annexes Korea. In the nice provincial town of Seattle, in the northwest of the United States, a certain citizen, William Edward Boeing, bought a small shipyard. For some time, this shipyard was just an asset. But in 1916 it became the backbone of the new company called Pacific Aero Products. The history of the future mega company begins in this moment. But I'll start a little earlier. Who is this William Boeing? He was not an ordinary kid from the village, as it should be in the stories of success. Being a member of a fairly wealthy family, young William graduated from the University of Wales and was very successful in his first business, woodworking. Actually, Boeing met the age of aviation only with this baggage. Money from the previous business and extensive experience in working with wood. Both were very useful in his new venture. And this is the secret of the company's founding location. In Seattle it was very easy to get a lot of necessary spruce trees. The idea to engage in aviation appeared with the usual hobby. Having earned some money, Boeing bought himself a new, fashionable toy, an airplane. However, when the amateur pilot broke his beautiful Martin S, it turned out it would take months to repair it. There were no spare parts, and the manufacturer's work was organized quite poorly. Then he decided that he could create the plane himself. And by 1916, he already had one. On June 15 of that year, a hydroplane took to the air. It was created in collaboration with George Westerwelt, an engineer from the US Navy. So the aircraft was named Boeing and Westerwelt, or BNW. So the airplane BNW can be considered the very first Boeing. Finally, on May 9th, 1917, the company went through a small remarketing and received a new name, the Boeing Airplane Company. The time was right. The United States entered World War I, and the aircraft manufacturer offered the Navy its new Boeing Model C. The fame of Henry Ford with his Model T was probably bothering the neighbors. The military liked the new planes and ordered 50 of them. The company expanded and bought another site in Seattle, which later became famous as the Boeing Plant 1. The end of the war was a problem for the aviation industry. The military, equipped with too many aircraft, dropped them into the secondary market. Airlines received a huge number of planes and manufacturers lost orders for new ones. At that time, many companies ceased to exist, and Boeing for a time was also engaged in production of furniture and boats. In 1919, the B-1 aircraft was developed, not this one. Boeing B-1 was a flying boat, accommodating one pilot, two passengers and postal cargo. These planes showed themselves very good in the short-range flights, mainly to the nearby Canadian territory. By the mid-1920s, Boeing started to work on fighter planes. Despite losing first tenders to Curtis Company, their fighters PW9 and PW12 soon became very successful, which raised the company to the pedestal of the largest aircraft manufacturers in the country. However, the civilian sector had also been actively developing. In 1928, Boeing 80 was created, a three-engine biplane capable of carrying 12 passengers. Unlike earlier multi-purpose vehicles, Boeing 80 was in fact Boeing's first fully passenger plane. 1930s and 40s In 1930, the monomail was created. It was an all-metal monoplane with a low wing, advanced aerodynamics and high flight speed. This aircraft was a real breakthrough in terms of glider development. But the engines at that time were too low power to fly this new model. Only two planes were created but the direction of development became obvious. In 1933, Boeing 247 was created, 
Having a crew of 3 people and 10 seats for passengers, it was much better than its competitors and was quite successful, even exported to other countries. Boeing supplied the first shipment of this aircraft to its own United Airlines. That's when the problems started. In 1934, the US government adopted an antitrust law prohibiting aircraft manufacturers and air carriers from uniting or being controlled by the same entity. It was a problem for the company and its founder. In the end, William Boeing left the company, without witnessing its future true triumph. When the founder left, the company was reorganized and concentrated on the large aircraft creation. Its big new model was the flying boat, Boeing 314 Clipper. In the late 1930s, it could carry up to 40 passengers and was the largest serious produced passenger aircraft. In addition, those planes were able to cross the Atlantic, founding one of the busiest and most important routes of our time. This plane was very much loved by the Pan Am, the king of American air travel of that time. In 1938, the Model 307 Stratoliner was created. It was the first aircraft with pressurized cabin, capable of flying on altitudes of more than 6 kilometers for long distances. New flight opportunities were not particularly in demand by civilian customers but proved useful in the military aviation. The Second World War became an era of unprecedented development in military technology, including aviation. This was the time when Boeing's most famous war machines appeared, B-17 and B-29 bombers. The pace of production was enormous. By 1944, Boeing was delivering more than 350 bombers for the US Air Force every month, and this was still not enough. B-17 bombers, apart from Boeing itself, were also produced by Lockheed Aircraft and Douglas Aircraft, while B-29s were made by Bell Aircraft and Glenn Martin. In total, 12,731 B-17 bombers and 3,970 B-29 bombers were produced, a couple of which became nuclear. The end of the war once again became a problem for aircraft manufacturers. Enormous production volumes were no longer needed, orders were compressed or cancelled. As a result, about 70,000 people lost their work. Boeing tried to minimize this shock by remaking the B-29 into a civilian model 377 Strata Cruiser, but this craft did not gain popularity even though the famous fat Super Goopy was created precisely on its basis. 1950s. After the war, Boeing continued being one of the leaders in the development and production of bomber aviation. The jet age came, and it brought such new planes as the B-47 Stratojet and the famous B-52 Stratofortress. The jet technology has also proven itself in the civilian aviation. Based on the military technology, a prototype 367-80 was created, which became the basis of KC-135 aerial tanker, as well as the first jet airliner of the company, Boeing 707. The age of a race in the world of civilian jet aviation had begun. The British de Havilland Comet, the French Sud Aviation Caravelle and the Soviet Tupolev Tu-104 had already taken their positions in this race. Boeing 707 appeared a few years later, in 1958. However, the 707 compensated this late entrance with its size and capacity. 1960s One of the important events in 1960s was the acquisition of Vertel aircraft. At that time, the Boeing Vertel division was born, engaged in helicopter business, a new important sector of aviation. In 1961, CH-47 Chinook has made its maiden flight a famous transport with two rotors, which remains a workhorse till now. A little later, the CX-46 Sea Knight was created and is now very popular in the US Marine Corps. In 1963, the company facilities started to deliver the new Boeing 727s. Despite the fact that now their history has come to an end, at one time those planes were very effective and popular, the number of which by the end of the production exceeded 1800 units. Another new direction for the company was rocket manufacturing. In 1961, Boeing received a contract for the production of the first stage of the Saturn V Super Heavy rocket. The experience of producing space systems was small, but at that time no one in the world could particularly boast of it. The history has shown Boeing managed to accomplish its task quite successfully. 
1967, Boeing launched another small jet airliner, which was destined to become the most important model in the company's history, at least until now. Boeing 737 flew into the sky and became the most popular commercial airplane in the world, and it still has not gone into the past. A little later, the company took another step, which became a milestone, the flagship of the model line, the biggest plane in the world and the revolution in the air travel. Boeing 747 was created. At the end of the 1960s, this aircraft was an absolute giant and an incredible challenge for everyone who worked on it. At that time, Boeing's main facility in Everett was built to produce it, and this factory is still their main production site and one of the largest buildings in the world. 1970s The 1970s began not particularly well for Boeing. Military orders for the Vietnam War were declining, the Lunar Apollo program was over, and debts were growing. The epic Boeing 747 was carrying its epic costs and troubles. Deliveries were delayed because of the persistent problems with the newest engines that Pratt Whitney could not figure out. In addition, the US Congress decided to close the program of Boeing 2707 supersonic airliner, trying to prove their supremacy over the Europe and the USSR with their Concorde and 2144, the Americans tried to solve an almost impossible task. Boeing 2707 was too complicated and expensive, and it never saw the sky. The commercial airplane group, the largest division of the company, was reduced from almost 84,000 people in 1968 to slightly more than 20,000 in 1971. This led to a loss of jobs in the related areas. As a result, unemployment and outflows in the state of Washington have reached the highest rates since the Great Depression, and Seattle almost turned into the likeness of the modern Detroit. The situation changed with the commencement of Boeing 747's serial operation. The airlines and infrastructure took some time to get used to the new plane and realize its potential, but Boeing eventually won. The American giants are being produced to this day, and their number exceeds 1500 units. Boeing 747 almost killed the company, but in the end it made the company into a world leader for many years. 1980s The beginning of 1980s was much more successful. The economy was strong, financial issues were resolved, and in 1983 the engineers celebrated the release of the thousands Boeing 737. However, the Americans were not allowed to relax. Over the ocean, the new European Airbus Corporation has gained success with its A300 airliners. The first response was the new single-aisle model Boeing 757. Then, the first American twin-jet wide-body Boeing 767 followed. In space, Boeing already felt quite confident, being one of the main suppliers, for example, of the Space Shuttle program. Despite the fact that the company did not develop new strategic bombers, it had a big role in the work of Northup and the creation of the first big stealth bomber B-2 Spirit. 1990s On the field of military aviation, Boeing had made progress in the almost forgotten area of fighter aviation. In collaboration with General Dynamics and Lockheed Martin, they created the first fifth-generation fighter, which, after winning the tender, became the main weapon of the US Air Force, the F-22 Raptor. On the field of civilian aviation, this decade was marked by the birth of one of the best models of the company, a twin-jet, wide-body Boeing 777 airliner. It was the first plane created entirely on the computer, one of the most advanced aircraft and the proud owner of the most powerful engines in the world. The little ones also didn't fall behind. Boeing 737 stepped over another milestone and entered the next generation age. In addition, the mid-1990s for the company was a period of large purchases. The collapse of the Soviet Union led to a significant reduction of military spending and many of the companies that lived at the expense of the Pentagon were badly impoverished. In 1996, Boeing bought the Rockwell's airspace and defense business, and in 1997, McDonnell Douglas was finally absorbed. At that time, the modern Boeing company as we know it appeared, and the company inherited the symbol and the style of the logo from McDonnell Douglas. 2000s in the 2000s, Boeing bought the Hughes Electronics and climbed into the space satellites industry. In 2001, there was a big move. The company moved its headquarters from the native Seattle to Chicago. There were many theories about this, but the simplest explanation, and the most realistic, 
the state of Illinois offered the aviators huge tax benefits, and there can never be too much money, even if you are a huge industrial corporation. The winning streak has ended for Boeing when the Pentagon chose Lockheed Martin as the winner of the Joint Strike Fighter Tender. Lockheed received a giant contract for the F-35 Lightning II, and Boeing had to close its X-32 project. In 2004, the company closed the production of Boeing 757, and in two years, Boeing 717 met the same fate. A similar thing could have happened with the 767 model, but it was saved by the pretty brisk orders for cargo versions. The program was preserved, at least for now. The problems for the company continued. In 2003, for the first time in decades, the European corporation Airbus became the world's aviation leader. The 9-11 terrorist attacks and the fuel prices rise squeezed the aviation market. Some Boeing programs, such as the Sonic Cruiser airliner, were closed. The solution was the creation of a completely new and groundbreaking aircraft. This project is now known as the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. This plane returned the company leadership, especially taking into account the problems of Airbus with their A380 flagship. To oppose it, Boeing were able to quickly create the upgraded Boeing 747-8, and they also conquered a big share of the market with their Dreamliners, while the Europeans were developing the newest Airbus A350. In space, most of the things were also looking up. Boeing and Lockheed Martin were quite friendly up there, despite the competition in the military aviation market. In 2006, a joint United Launch Alliance corporation was created, the largest US rocket manufacturer and launch operator. That is, until Elon Musk started taking their jobs. The second decade of the 21st century was quite successful for the Boeing company. Boeing 787 is produced and delivered in huge quantities. The next generation Boeing 737 MAX is being raised to the sky. The future Boeing 777X is being prepared for the flights. And their first manned spacecraft, CST-100 Starliner, is about to fly into space. In 1916, Boeing was a small hangar near the river, run by a former woodworker, and produced two hydroplanes. In 2016, Boeing launched five satellites, 180 military aircraft, and 748 commercial airliners. Its annual revenue reached $95 billion, and almost 150,000 people work in its facilities and offices around the globe. The history of the company is very long, and it is clearly not going to end, unlike this video. Next time we will look closer at the main models of this remarkable corporation. See you soon! Like, comment and subscribe to the channel. Fast flights and soft landings to you.